Welcome back, Geometry students, to part two of section 5.4. In part one, we talked about medians and the concurrency of medians, leaving us uh, the centroid. Today, we're going to be talking about the altitude. Now, what do we mean by altitude? Let's break it down. The easiest way to understand altitude is kind of referring to it in the sense that we uh, normally do in everyday nomenclature. So the best way, I think, is to think about in terms of a mountain. If you wanted to measure the altitude of a mountain, how would you do it? Would you come up along the side and be like, okay, the mountain is has this altitude? No, you wouldn't do that. Would you go, oh, I think I'm going to go to the midpoint of the mountain? No, you wouldn't do that any, either. What you would do is you'd go from the top of the mountain, okay, here, and you would go straight down, okay? And what I mean by straight down, I mean that it's forming a perpendicular uh, relationship with the base. It's creating a 90 degree angle. And that's how you know it's going straight up and down all the way to the top. That's what we refer to as altitude. How do we write that in uh, a definition? Well, altitude, uh, let's go ahead and use red. Altitude is a segment uh, connecting the vertex, okay, the vertex is here, the top of the mountain, to a line containing the opposite side, and I'm going to explain what that means in just a second, and forming a 90 degree angle. So this one's kind of like a, a longer definition just because this needs to be explained a little bit more in depth. A line containing the opposite. I'm going to use purple. A line containing the opposite side. Okay, I'm going to get to that in this one. So stay tuned for that one. Now, we can draw altitudes on every side of the triangle. And I'm going to switch colors here. Okay, so I'm going to go with this dark red. We can draw an altitude over here and that's a bad one that's a bad example okay because the remember the it has to form a 90 degree angle and this is kind of tough you can see i'm trying my best to form a 90 degree angle and that's pretty close so that would be an altitude and then this one would be an altitude and it's going to be like right there so you can see that we have these little 90 degree angles formed and then they all meet somewhere we're going to talk about that in just a second so stay tuned for that also all right now these ones this is a right triangle, so how would you get a vertex connecting the opposite side? So the opposite side would be this side right here, okay, the side it doesn't touch. How would you get it over there? Well, you just go straight down, and it would be right there, okay? So right triangles are pretty easy to see the altitude of. So we have an altitude right here also, altitude, okay? And then another altitude would be this one over here, okay? Connecting a vertex to a line containing the opposite side. Of course, there's another one right there, okay? But I don't want to mess it up too much, so I don't want to worry about that just yet. We're going to do that down here. Now, this last one. This one's a little tricky, okay? Because if we want to draw an altitude for this guy, okay, for this, this vertex, we come down, let me get this straight, okay? We come down here, and that's clearly not 90 degrees, so we need to reduce it, reduce it, reduce it. Notice here, it's still not 90 degrees. So how do we get to 90 degrees? Is we have to go to a line containing the opposite side. So we have to extend this line, okay? And that's how you have to create an altitude. Now, the best way to kind of visualize this and kind of understand it to a little bit better is imagine you have this mountain and it's kind of like, I don't know, somehow it does this. It's got, I don't know. I don't know if this actually exists in nature. Imagine you had something like this. It looks like something like the Grinch lives on. But anyway, imagine you had this and you wanted to measure the altitude, how high this point is. Well, you wouldn't go this way, okay? You would have to go straight down to the ground. So you'd have to go down this way towards the base to a line containing the base and make it 90 degrees, okay? That's the best way to describe it. So this is an altitude. 
All right. So we have an example of what an altitude is. And now we're going to move on to the concurrency of altitudes theorem. Now, as you draw three altitudes, they're all going to meet up at a certain spot. And it's kind of cool in itself that the altitudes all meet up in one place. Now, what happens when we do that? Well, let's go ahead and draw this again. I think I already had this up here. So let me, I'm just going to, I'm going to cheat. Don't tell anyone, please. I'm going to cheat and I'm going to copy these three lines. Copy. I think this triangle is the same. Paste. Oh, it is not. This is a different triangle. Oh, well. Okay, we're going to have to redraw this. Bummer. I guess it's not that bad. All right, so I'm going to draw this line. Okay, there's one altitude. Okay, then I'm going to draw this one. Okay, and that's about 90 degrees. I'm just, I'm just eyeballing it here. Now, if you wanted to do like a professional uh, altitude, you would get your your protractor out and you would measure 90 degrees. And there's, there's, that's a whole different topic right there that I'm not going to cover, but uh, it's called constructions. And it's actually pretty neat. Now, they all meet up in one spot. Let's label it, I the blue. Now, what is this point called? In medians, we call it the centroid, but this is not the centroid they were looking for. This is the orthocenter. Okay, so there's different measures of center. We've already covered in center, circumcenter, centroid, and orthocenter. So they all have the word basically center in them, which is kind of cool, but that is the orthocenter. And it's where the three altitudes meet up. Okay, now we're gonna go to this guy over here. Okay, we already talked about with a right triangle that you just go right down the side because it's already a 90 degree angle. So to connect the vertices, it's like that. Now what's cool is where two lines meet up, the third line's also gonna meet up. So I don't even really need to draw this third altitude in because I already know two lines meet up where. They meet up at the vertex. Okay, so this is another orthocenter right there. So this is acute. Let me label these triangles real quick. So this is acute. This is right. And a right triangle has a special bonus that the orthocenter, orthocent, how do I spell that? Ortho. I, I've been, <laughs> or, okay, I, I realized what I did. All right, there we go. Orthocenter is always on the vertex of the 90 degree angle in a right triangle. Okay, and that's that's a pretty cool uh, uh, property because it makes it way easier to find the orthocenter. Okay, now the last one we're going to talk about here is we're going to talk about the obtuse triangle. So the obtuse triangle, okay, the obtuse triangle uh, is a little funky, I'm going to be honest, because remember we talked about the, the Grinch Mountain, okay, the Grinch Mountain, we have to go straight down to a line containing the opposite side. So we got to, oops. I gotta draw the line containing the opposite side first, and I'm just gonna ballpark it. Okay, and then we come down here. Okay, and actually we're gonna come through. Okay, so we're gonna come through. And then this one's gonna be a little bit easier to draw. Okay, because it's like this. Oh. Okay, and we're gonna come through again. Something like that. And then the last one, okay, we need to extend this line a little bit. And we're gonna come through, and it's gonna look something like that. So you'll notice that the obtuse uh, triangle has an orthocenter that's outside of it. This is kind of like the circumcenter for obtuse um, triangles, but you'll notice with circumcenters, let me see if I can draw a quick triangle. With, uh, that looks kind of obtuse. So with uh, circumcenters, it points away from the vertex, so circumcenters like go this way, and uh, orthocenters they point towards the vertex, so they point this way. Just as a quick distinction, I'm going to erase this because it's ugly, but that's just something to 
uh, differentiate those two. Now, I wanna talk real quick, before I get into this example, these examples are pretty long, so I wanna make a separate video, sorry, part three. I know I don't really like splitting it up into three parts, but I wanna talk about why are we doing this? Why do we have all these different methods of finding the center of a triangle? We've already talked about circumcenter, incenter, uh, centroid, and orthocenter, but why? Why do we have different measures of a triangle? Well. Let me compare two different shapes for you. So move this over, okay? Two different shapes. If we have a circle, okay, and a triangle, and we want asked to find the center of both, how do we do that? Well, for the circle, it's very easy. We know we can find the center of a circle because there's one point that is equidistant from its sides, okay? It's exactly in the middle of the shape. Okay, so it's equidistant. But with the triangle, it's funky. Where's the center of a triangle? The center of a triangle, is it here? Okay, is that, if you're looking at the screen, you're like, oh no, it's up a little bit more. There's the center. Or is it here? How do we know where the center of a circle is? That's why there's different ways to find the measure of the center of a circle. We have perpendicular bisectors, okay? As we connect the perpendicular bisectors, that gives us a way to measure the center of a circle, okay? It's halfway, it's a line containing the midpoint plus a line that's 90 degrees. So is it perpendicular bisectors? That's one way, okay? It tells us where the center is. Another way is, okay, oh, and another thing that's cool about perpendicular bisectors is it tells us exactly something that is equidistant from the vertices. Okay, so is it equidistant from the vertices that makes it the center of the circle? Or is it equidistant from the sides? Because it's if, if it's equidistant from the sides, then that would make it the in-center. Remember, the in-center is the point of concurrency of the angle bisectors, okay? So is it that, the in-center? Okay, that's one more way to find the center of a circle, equidistant from the sides, equidistant from the uh, vertices. What about what we did for the centroid, the point of concurrency of the medians? Okay, would that give us the center of a circle? In my opinion, the medians look pretty good, but doesn't always look good for all the triangles. So we also have the orthocenter, where we connect the altitudes together. In my opinion, orthocenter is like, I don't know, it doesn't look that like it's in the center, but it's another way to measure the center, okay? Because there's different ways to define the center of a triangle, we have different ways to do that, okay? So that is what these sections all about. 5.3 and 5.4 are all about how can we measure the center of a triangle. Stay tuned for part three, where I'm going to talk about these examples to find orthocenter. These are tough. Stay tuned.